Well, today I want to tell you the story behind the Ballad of the Little Green Leaf. Uh, one October, about 40 some years ago, I, uh, I was dealing with guilt and regret and, and uh, the Holy Spirit seemed to drop into my heart a concept that I put in ballad form to help me to see how much God cares and how great his mercy richness uh, of his resurrection power is in it's in, in us and so uh, today I have been outdoors it, this is October 30th 2021 and the wind has been blowing the leaves have been dropping I've got this background to simulate that and uh, hope you don't mind I don't change into my preacher costume for this I'm, I'm recording it on Saturday night uh, and uh, I'll, I'll put on my, my preacher costume tomorrow a little bit more. I'm in the pulpit, but you're getting it first hand here. So uh, this ballad of the little green leaf, I, uh, there's not an October that's gone by the last 40 years that I haven't picked up my guitar and, and uh, gone through this. And not many times it hasn't brought tears to my eyes. So I, I pray that it'll help you to appreciate in a new light how much God loves you. We're going to break it down phrase by phrase, and then we'll put it all together at the end. But here it goes. It starts out like this. It was late October with a cold wind blowing. When I fell to the ground, the snow was snowing. You know, the Bible says that we've all fallen, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, Isaiah 64, verse 6 says, all of us have become like one who is unclean. All our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. The fall is a theological term to describe what happened in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve fell, in, uh, fell into sin, their lifeline with God was disrupted, broken. Death and disease and discord were introduced, and the and the darkness continues today. Uh, in our locality, the word fall describes a season when the weather starts getting chilly and it leads towards the heart of winter. The plants go dormant, leaves fall to the earth, shriveled and dead, and the icy winds just keep blowing them farther and farther down the street. Well, the song says, I was in the gutter when he reached down, picked me up to hold me in his hand. Psalm 40, verse 2 says, He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. Ezekiel 16 says, On the day you were born, you were despised. Then I passed by and saw you kicking about in your blood. And as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, Live. The old hymn says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. And then finishes up by saying, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Well, he said, hey there, little fellow, what seems to be the matter? We'll fix you right up. And he went to get a ladder. But no ladder tall enough was to be found in all the land. Now, I know theologically, God would not have to try and find a ladder and wonder if there was one. He knows that. But I just wanted to make a point here that, that there is no ladder it's tall enough that we could reach to God. And if a leaf saw a ladder, it couldn't climb it anyhow. It needs help. It's incapable of doing it. It can't work its way up. And we can't work our way up to God. That little leaf can't climb back up the tree and reattach itself. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It's the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. So even if there was a ladder, it could reach all the way to, to God. You might as well try and get a ladder to the sun and get incinerated on the way. But if there was a ladder, we couldn't even reach the first rung. Well, there was no way on earth to get me back up there. So he set me on the ground, went off somewhere. But he came back with the biggest ax I've ever seen. Isaiah 53 says that surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, 
smitten by God and afflicted. Jesus was struck by God. He absorbed the punishment for our sins. He was chopped down. He was laid low for our sake. And not only for our sake, but Jesus really died for the Father too. There was no other way. And uh, he agreed with the Father that he would go through with that because the Father loved us so much. He said he would even allow his son to go through that uh, torture and humiliation in order that the penalty might be absorbed and that we might receive forgiveness and entrance and, and compatibility with God. So it was definitely a difficult thing, a difficult day, the most hardest thing that God has ever had to do. But it says in the song, then he lifted that axe, but he looked so sad as if that was the only tree that he'd ever had. God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. Uh, God said to, to Abraham in a prefiguring of, of the sacrifice that was to take place on Calvary with himself, he said to Abraham, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. And what is more precious to us than something that we only have one one of, uh, only child, uh, for God here in, in that sense, uh, how much does God love you as much as he loves his only son? Well, he wanted to stop, but then he looked at a shivering little leaf. I was just a little leaf of autumn. Thought I'd fallen once too often. Got myself too far out on a limb. I didn't think even that wise old gardener could put a dried up leaf and a tree back together. But I was wrong, and here I am. As you know, God is the gardener. He's not just a judge and a creator and a king. Uh, we're early on introduced to this concept. Genesis 2, 8 says, And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord God made to spring up every tree. So God is early on recognized as a gardener, a nurturer, a protector, a planter. Uh, if you do a garden, you, you design it, you, you uh, watch over it, you water it, you weed it, you uh, see to it that it flourishes and you, you have hopes and dreams for that garden. And God focused his energy upon us. And even that one little leaf that he saw fall from the tree in our story. Well, much as he regretted to, to go through with what he had to do, there, there was no way he could put off that dreadful chore. So he swung that ax with an anguish roar. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The cross reveals the seriousness of sin. If there's any other way to come to God, any other way to be right uh, through our works or some other plan, then God would have been incredibly cruel to tell his son, you have to go to the cross. But there was no other way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So it reveals sin is not just uh, some, some little thing. It is serious. The cross reveals that, but it also reveals the depth of God's love. 2 Corinthians 9.15, thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. And that tree came crashing down and the whole earth shook. Matthew 27 tells us that on the cross, Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, yielded up his spirit, and behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. It was an earth-shaking thing in the spiritual realm, as well as in the natural. And then the song goes on to say, it was dark as night in those awful moments. And that little, that little leaf that had fallen to the ground, it was darkness had come over him. Uh, the darkest day on earth to, before this was the time when Adam had sinned. And sin entered the world and all the darkness that accompanied it, it was a disaster. But the most dark day of all on earth was the day when Jesus hung on the cross and all that sin that entered the world, it, it was placed upon him and he personally absorbed all the punishment. He, 
He experienced the, the separation from God as he carried the sin of the world upon his shoulders. First John 2, 2 says, For he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Well, let's go on with the song. But then I notice that the wind had stopped blowing. Or was it just that that tree was covering me? Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. That's Psalm 91. Psalm 63 verse 7 says, because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. Well, sap was flowing where that tree was broken. Some float on me. I felt myself growing. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. That's Ephesians 2. And then I realized the gardener had grafted me right back into the limb. Romans 11.23 says, And if the people of Israel... Turn from their unbelief, they will be grafted in again. For God has the power to graft them back into the tree. Well, guess what? Then he grabbed that tree with a shout and a grin and raised it up higher than it had ever been. Philippians 2 describes that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And I found myself looking down from a heavenly place. Ephesians 2.6, he's raised us up with him, seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So you see, I was just a little leaf of autumn. Thought I'd fallen once too often. Got myself too far out on a limb. I didn't know that wise old gardener was also known as my heavenly father. I didn't think he'd want me back, but I was wrong, and here I am. Well, Jesus told about a father in Luke 15, while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion, ran and embraced him and kissed him. The father said to the older brother, be glad, because this brother of yours was dead. And is alive again. He was lost and is found. So now I'll be safe in the darkest night of winter. But if ever in the sunny springtime weather I'm tempted to take off again, try it on my own. Lord, don't let me play the fool again. Help me remember last October when I was down and out and cold and dead all alone. I was just a little leaf. I felt like I was nothing. But my father up in heaven must have thought that I was really something because look at what he went through to bring me back to life again. And that's where we find our value. That's how we find how precious we are to God. Jesus told a parable in Matthew 13, verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. And then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Well, we are the treasure in the field. God gave all that he had to buy us. We are the treasure. Next verse says again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. If, if God didn't spare his own son for us, uh, then that is the measure of his love. And so the father's heart is longing to restore you, just like me. Ezekiel 34 says, As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. Isaiah 30, verse 18 says, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. So if you've experienced rejection from others, 
Know that God wants you. He's calling you to himself. The song Sweetly Broken says, at the cross, you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees. And the hardest hearts have softened when they've really seen that tree. Zechariah 12 talks about the people of Israel who have rejected Jesus, and then they finally see him. It says, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. Zechariah 12.10, and next verse says, and on that day, a fountain will be open to the house of David, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, to cleanse them from sin and impurity. So come back where you belong. You can join in this song with a little green leaf living close to him. Just a little green leaf dancing in the spirit's wind. <laughs>